right, let's get on the road. So, I'm gonna make this channel, first off, what's up guys? Um, I think I'm gonna call this channel W, it's my nickname my boys gave me. And uh, to be quite honest, this is a result of Hamza, the YouTube channel Hamza, shout out to him, for kicking my ass into gear. He suggested that within 24 hours you make a YouTube video, you just start, or whatever you've been procrastinating on, just do it within 24 hours. And so it's been about 30 minutes since I heard him say that, so I'm gonna do it. Anyways, it might be a little rough. I'm trying to get my camera situated. Uh, my Honda Civic's not really liking it, and I don't have any tripod or anything, so we're gonna do the best we can with what we've got, right? So anyways, I want this uh, YouTube channel to be my lifestyle, I guess. My life and how I'm progressing as a human. Uh, yeah, self-development. Also fun stuff like motorcycles and random shit, you know? So anyways, I'm, this YouTube, uh, this video is gonna be about how I lost 110 pounds. I was a bit of a, I'm a fat fuck in uh, high school. So, not to divulge into too much information, but my living situation always wasn't always the greatest growing up, and that's good now. Like we're, um, I don't have any unresolved issues with my family members. I love them, and we're all good. But for growing up from middle school to high school, we didn't have the best access to food or financial stability, which is basically a result on how I am today uh, when it comes to finances and money I, I like to be secure and do the safe thing which isn't always necessarily the best thing but uh, you know working two jobs or working a job and saving the income from another job and living off of one income while saving the rest or random stuff like that but anyways this video is about how I lost 110 pounds and kept it off for about six to seven years. So, b back in 2016, 2017, my friend went, to, we, we uh, split ways in the summer, you know, school ended, and uh, so my 11th grade school ended, summer happened, and he came back and he was skinny. I was like, what the fuck? How did that happen? And uh, we didn't, I don't, I didn't have a phone, I didn't have anything going through high school really I, I had one towards senior year towards the end of senior year but um I was very very poor growing up but anyways we didn't keep in touch or anything but when he came back and you know we were boys and stuff and he lost the weight and that was the first time I really saw that someone could lose weight you know that I, like I actually witnessed it in real life you know everyone in my family for the most part has is heavier so I saw him lose the weight and I was like oh shit it's possible and then I didn't really know anything about fitness or nutrition. I just wanted to lose weight and get in shape. And that was, I, I, I'd start watching YouTube channels and blog channels like you, uh, Matt Ogus or uh, David Laid or all these people. And I'd see the physique that they had and I was like, shit, the human body can be like that. So I wanted it, you know, and this is where the obsession started towards beginning to middle of senior year. I'd lost about 80 pounds my senior year of high school, all said and done. And school ended and structure ended and I didn't relapse or anything. Actually, this is one my most productive period of time is right after senior, uh, senior year ended. I was absolutely dedicated to the gym and exercising and not necessarily the gym at the beginning i kind of just did what was called the common sense eating i just kind of i mean looking at it now i wasn't really wise but I, I would just kind of starve myself and then eat very very little bit of food and then as i learned nutrition and, and how to exercise and stuff and get the body that i wanted i adapted and, and altered my my lifestyle to fit that narrative so I would, I had no clue about calories or any of that nonsense and 
towards, uh, I'd say like halfway to maybe the end of senior year, I started learning about it. I had health class and I knew more than the average person because I was interested in it because it was what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to lose weight. And so naturally you start to learn those things that'll get you there. So I initially just took action. I was exercising, running, you know, I run. I ran a lot. That's that was the foundation of my uh, weight loss journey. I would, I would, I was so dedicated. I would get up before school and I would run two miles, and then I would only take Sundays off. That was my only day off, and I did that for quite some time. And then I started getting. In, I bought these twenty-pound dumbbells, two of them, and I started learning about working out and, and stuff like that. And genetically, naturally, my family were. We might be heavier, but we can put on muscle pretty quick, pretty easily. I come from like a farmer family. Like I personally never did any of the stuff. Like I mean, I had a, I helped put hay in a few times, but <laughs> going on tangents. But anyways, we came from a farmer background and uh, you know home cooked meals and, and stuff like that. At least my grandparents. And so he's always been skinny, but my grandmother she she was heavier, and, and people in my mom's side they they're all heavier. My dad's thinner but he's still you know kind of he was overweight when I was growing up he's really thin now but so genetically we're like what endomorph mesomorph you know we, we carry body fat easily but we also can put on muscle easily right so my first time bench pressing I hit 165 you know and, and I repped it out for like one or two reps and I was like oh geez kind of heavy but looking back on it now it's kind of funny because my friend he could barely bench 95 pounds, so, you know. So my starting point for strength was up, but my body fat was really up too. So, anyways, as I started learning about nutrition and stuff, I was still exercising, still doing everything, and then I would just alter and tweak based on the things that I learned. So, I'm gonna hold the camera because it's gonna fall. We got a person coming. So, anyways, um, so I would learn, and then I would alter my lifestyle based on the things that I learned, right? And uh, I started learning about protein and um, carbs and fats and how your body actually utilizes them, nutrient partitioning. I learned how uh, everybody's genetic set point, you know, the set point theory about how your body fat percentage, everyone genetically wants to be at a certain level and why it's easier for some people and not as easy for others. Is It's not necessarily that, which fundamentally the only thing that matters is a caloric deficit, calories in, calories out. But the perceived effort required for each individual is different. How you perceive the effort is what's different between one person and the other. Me being below 15% body fat is miserable. And then someone being at 10% body fat and they're cruising and they can get down to six and be fine. You know, their range is a lot more aesthetically pleasing to the eye than mine might be. And I'm using arbitrary numbers. I don't know exactly what my set point is. I'd say that I'm a little bit heavier than right now than my set point. And I'm, I'm actually leaning down right now. But despite that, when I would learn new things about diet and nutrition and exercising, I would implement them into my life. And then that would be, be become my new normal. And then this created this, this vicious loop of about two years of just non-stop learning and obsessing over calories in, calories out, uh, uh, nutrient partitioning, set point theory, fat cells and why certain um, certain people want their fat cells to be fuller than others genetically. There's a genetic predisposition, predisposition to want to have a higher amount of fatty acids or lipids in your fat cells stored. All right, so I just obsessed over learning all this stuff and and uh, I got some pretty great results. I got into really good shape. I bench pressed. My all-time best was 275. I squatted 315 for two, and I deadlifted, I think, 385. Don't quote me. I never really trained deadlift much. Um, and I just learned to love the process, love actually working out, exercising, and it became became pretty easy to uh, just focus on the, the results because I mean I was a heavier guy so results were a little bit 
they weren't fast necessarily. I just kept telling myself that if I continue to do these things, then eventually my body has no choice but to change, right? And that kind of uh, allowed me to continue pushing forward and doing the things that would help get me to my goals. Uh, the camera. All right. uh, it's dangerous, don't do this when you're driving. I'm just, yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Except for things that can be beneficial and help you. Do your research, but also another thing, I, so I, I had this misconception that I was gonna be a bodybuilder, right? You're probably not gonna be a bodybuilder. So there's no point in training. I mean, you can train like a bodybuilder, you know, volume and intensity. Intensity is the number one driving thing to make uh, gains, right? But if you just, if you just focus on the little things that you ch can change every single day, you'd be surprised at the results that you can make over an extended period of time. So I lost 110 pounds over the course of probably two to three years, right? So it was a slow process and eventually, uh, there's, there's kind of like a rebounding phase where where I got leaner than I could be. I'd say that's probably 12 to 10, 10 to 12%. But then again, I'm not 100% accurate on that. I can just judge based on my body. I, it, who, and honestly, if you look good, it doesn't really matter what that number is. But um. It's important to continue to learn and then modify your current lifestyle accordingly so that you'll eventually make the results that you want. And understand that it takes longer than a day or two days or a week or a month, sometimes even a year. However long you were that way, have overweight, whatever, is probably idealistically how long you should be slowly incrementally increasing changes and being in a caloric deficit to go back to a, a semblance some semblance of healthy you know uh, physique or body fat percentage if you're 40 percent body fat you didn't get there overnight you know constant overeating and surplus is what led you there so it's not fair to say that I want to be shredded in a month if you've got a lot of weight to lose, right? And then if, if you do it too fast, our bodies are smart. They don't, you don't need your bicep, you know, other than to do perform daily tasks of lifting, you know, whatever, curling motion stuff. But if you don't, if your heart is in, you know, in need for those amino acids, they'll take it from your bicep, they don't care. So if you, if you restrict your calories too much and you're, and too much of a caloric deficit, it is detrimental to your progress. So specifically what I did, for me personally, when I looked to lose the 110 pounds, I used to run in the morning a lot. I used to starve myself. I do not suggest you do that. Learn how to track your calories, how to, how to determine your maintenance calories and I'll make more videos on that stuff later on. I just want a, a brief synopsis or summary of uh, all the things that I did uh, collectively to get to where I am today and maintain that weight loss over six to seven years. And the confidence to say that I know that I'll never be truly obese or overweight again.
and I want to pass that knowledge along to as many people as I possibly can. Just driving around uh, back rows of, uh, there's like towns connected where I live and it's like a back, back roads of a town that's next to the town that I live in. So anyways, yeah, I, I would say I focused on the caloric deficit and those are arbitrary terms because no one actually knows how many calories you're actually consuming and how many calories you're actually expending. But you use a range over the course of many weeks and months and you can determine, am I gaining weight, am I losing weight? If I'm gaining weight, I'm eating too much or I'm not moving enough or a combination of both and then you adjust accordingly. If you're losing weight and you're losing weight too fast, you know, like your, your strength or your progress is going down in the gym and you, you're not seeing the same strength, some strength loss at the beginning of a, of a deficit phase is, is going to happen. But if it's drastic, you probably need to up the calories a little bit and adjust accordingly. So let's say just do something whether that's research, learn, but if you're drinking a two liter of soda right now, learning about how to lose weight, or you have a case of or a case of a 12 pack of Mountain Dew sitting on the on the floor because I used to do that, watching YouTube videos about how this person was in shape and vlogs, and then you crack open your third can of the night, it's probably not gonna be conducive to your you know what you want to accomplish if you're trying to lose weight. I think that's all I have to talk about for right now. Uh, I lost 110 pounds and kept it off for six and a half to seven years by simply learning about why we gain fat, how we lose fat, the systems in our bodies that allow that to happen, calories in, calories out, the laws of thermodynamics. And I guess I created this obsession over the course of five plus or I'd say I was obsessed at the beginning because I was just motivated. But as motivation went away, I learned to use discipline to do what I had to despite not wanting to do it. I mean, there was times where there would be a foot of snow and I would have to walk about a half a mile to the gym because like poor family, you know, this was after I graduated high school, they still didn't even have a car. And we live in a small town. Yeah? so. I had to walk to my local YMCA in a foot of snow over a bridge and everything just to get there to work out. There's times where like a, a truck would go by and there'd be that nasty slush, you know, I live in, in New York and so in the winter time there'd be that nasty slush and like dirt and stuff on the road. He just covered me, sprayed me in uh, mud and dirt and salt and oh, it was a rough one. But I still went and I still hit the gym session, I still got it done, you know, so. You have to realize that sometimes your goals, sometimes you'll find reasons and excuses to not do the thing that you know that you should be doing. And I could have just turned around, you know, I wasn't even that, I mean, I, I was like halfway there. And I mean, I should have turned around and changed maybe, but I mean, I was heavier, so I wasn't, you know, cold or anything, it was whatever. I was just kind of annoyed. I went there, worked out, cleaned off the benches, I dried, you know, and that was it. I got the workout in and that was fine. There was another time I went to the gym and I squatted, <laughs> ripped my pants fully, just ripped them. And <laughs> I mean, it sucked, but I continued the workout. There was a bunch of people in there and I'm, I, mean, I don't know if they heard it or not, and you know, but at the end of the day, they probably will never remember me and I'll never remember them. I, I go to a different gym now and they were just college students just passing by. So it's so another thing I wanna say is like, me personally, I never had an issue with um, with like people watching me or, or, or being afraid to go to the gym or uh, people would like, you know, judge me or whatever. I, I didn't give a shit about that. You know, I was already poor. I already came from a poor background. I, you know, like I already had hand-me-down rant, like shitty clothes and, and, you know, so that was irrelevant to me. I, I just wanted to work out because I wanted to better myself. And 
I actually, then I got a job, and you know, I started like making the improvements in my life, and you know, started socializing and making new friends, and and I, you know, got in, like an apartment, and you know, I'm actually living with my buddy right now. Uh, he bought a house, and you know, it's we're house hacking, quote unquote, and uh, you know, like life's been pretty good, but you you know, your quality of life. If you lose the weight and you get into good shape and and you don't listen to the negative thoughts that are telling you that you shouldn't do it or that it's not going to work for you or whatever self-limiting beliefs that you have, if you simply just take some directive action, understand that you're going to make mistakes and just try and then learn and, and, and slowly increase the intensity at which you're capable of that and that means gym that means the deficit that means what you can and can't cut out if you're eating 5,000 calories a day you probably shouldn't drop to a thousand calories a day that's going to be too too uh drastic on your on your uh system you know it's not going to be fun it's not going to be an enjoyable experience so learn and i mean this will be a good place to learn because i'll I'm gonna consistently upload videos and content about how I personally lost the weight, how I'm keeping it off, what I do to track my calories, how I do the things that I do, and I'll divulge into the things that made it easier, that things that make it harder, and, and what you can and can't do to uh, see better results. All right, so thanks for thanks for watching my first video. I know it's a little rough, but we're just gonna get better as uh, as I continue to make and upload these types of content. So, all right, have a good day, guys, and talk to you later.